Hi, my name is Nikhil Baduma, and today we'll be reviewing the topic we covered in the previous video about the citric acid cycle. Let's start off with the concept question. Number one, acetyl-CoA accumulates in what location during cellular respiration? A, the outer membrane, B, the inner membrane, C, the intermembrane space, D, the matrix, or E, the cytosol? Take a moment to think about this question. All right. Well, if you said the answer was D, matrix, then you'd be absolutely correct. Remember that in the process of the citric acid cycle, acetyl-CoA is released right when acetyl-CoA adds itself to oxaloacetate to produce uh, citrate. As a result, because this process happens in the matrix, you can expect acetyl-CoA to continue to accumulate in the matrix. The outer membrane, inner membrane don't really make sense because it's difficult to accumulate small molecules in the actual membrane itself. The intermembrane space recently really isn't the location of too many interesting chemical reactions except for the accumulation of protons, which we'll talk about in the future lecture video. And cytosol doesn't make sense either because it would probably require energy to pump acetyl-CoA into the cytosol, and the citric acid cycle doesn't occur in the cytosol anyway, that's only glycolysis. So D, matrix, is probably the best answer we have. All right, let's move to the next question. How many carbon atoms are fed into the citric acid cycle from a molecule of glucose? A, 2, B, 3, C, 4, or D, 6, or E, 8? Take a moment to think about this question. All right, if you said the answer is C, 4, then you're correct. Let's think about how to come to the answer to this question. Each molecule of glucose has six carbon atoms. Now, these carbon atoms are all preserved when we end up with pyruvate. But we remember that during the pre-processing phase, each molecule of pyruvate loses one carbon atom because that pre-processing phase results in the release of carbon dioxide. As a result, we ended up having two plus two carbon atoms for each acetyl-CoA molecule that enters the citric acid cycle. And that results in a total of four carbon atoms entering the citric acid cycle. Great, let's move on to the next question. When is carbon dioxide released during respiration? A, glycolysis. B, oxidation of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, C, citric acid cycle, D, lactic acid fermentation, or E, photosynthesis. Remember to select all of the following that are correct. In other words, more than one answer choice may be applicable. Take a moment to think about this question. All right, if you said the answer was B, oxidation of pyruvate acetyl-CoA, and C, citric acid cycle, you'd be correct. In the process of glycolysis, all six, molecule, all six carbon, carbon atoms are still retained in the pyruvate that results, and so glycolysis is incorrect, 
During lactic acid fermentation, there's no carbon dioxide that's released. Instead, what you might be thinking about is ethanol fermentation, in which carbon dioxide is released, but those are two different things. So D is incorrect. And the photosynthesis is wrong also because, remember, photosynthesis is when carbon dioxide is taken up to produce glucose, not the other way around. On the other hand, during the oxidation of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, we do see carbon dioxide being released from pyruvate when acetyl-CoA is being formed, so that's correct. This, during the citric acid cycle, the remaining two carbon atoms that are left in each of the acetyl-CoA molecules are also released, and so C is also correct, resulting in B and C being the correct two answers. Great. Well, I hope you enjoyed working with me in this worked example video and I look forward to working with you further in other videos.